Well, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great pleasure also from a webinar uh, source to make a short lecture on the lung ultrasound. How is it a holistic discipline? And we will see it through the example of the blue protocol. The travel is virtual. The lecture is short, but this is always my great honor to participate with the manual brain fascinating uh, ambience and uh, conferences. I specify I still have no conflict of interest. So uh, some history. We had the opportunity to submit on July 4, 1991, the concept of whole body critical ultrasound. Inside, there was the heart, there was the vessel, there was the lung, which was only one part of the discipline, but maybe that was the cherry on the cake, so to speak. But we are always pleased to speak of the lung. 15 minutes, one not, not one second to lose. We will not speak of the seven principles of lung ultrasound. We need to speak first of the basis, the standardized 10 signs and this reminder will be useful i'm sorry to say that in 2020 not only to young investigators but also to world experts my apologize in advance so what are the 10 basic signs for making lung ultrasound the critically ill that is lucy the first sign is how to detect the pleural line. And we use the shape of the ribs. It shows something like a bat, the bat sign. It indicates always the parietal pleura. This is the mandatory first step. The second step is the A line. That is the repetition of the pleural line indicating that there is air living or dead below the parietal pleura. If the image that is inside the quadrangle that we call the Merlin space moves, it means that we have lung sliding, the third sign. It indicates that we have also the visceral pleura with, together with the parietal pleura. This moves exactly from the pleural line, not one millimeter above. We can have with those uh, two images uh, the seashore sign that is a way to see lung sliding in a frozen image. I go rapidly with the signs of pleural effusion because uh, in 15 minutes we still have the quad sign that that is a line parallel to the pleural line that indicates the, the visceral pleura. I go very rapidly for not spoiling time. The lung consolidation can be partial, like here. It is subplural, and we have the shred sign or the fractal sign, which clearly indicates lung consolidation. That is the shredded area between the structural pattern, which is consolidating lung, and the air down. Here we see a translobar lung consolidation. The whole lung is consolidated, well, it is also subplural because I see it with ultrasound. So the word subplural is a bit meaningless. We call this the lung sign. It is completely specific to translobar, of course, lung consolidation. Now the B line and its relation with lung rockets. The B line is the elementary sign of interstitial syndrome. It is always a committal artifact, always arising from the pleural line. It always moves with lung sliding, provided there is a lung sliding. That makes three criteria. And now we have four criteria, which are almost always present. Thanks to the word almost, we are always a universal definition. It is long without fading. It is well-defined like a laser. It erases the A lines that should be located in these areas. And it is hyperechoic, like the plural line. Sorry. From three B lines that are more than two, we call this pattern lung rockets and 
lung rockets indicate interstitial syndrome. Pneumothorax, this is the raw image. And in this slide, we see that at the left, anterior lung sliding is abolished. That generates the stratosphere sign. Please not barcode, stratosphere sign, thank you. That indicates stratospheric phenomena. We have the repetition of the pleural line, the A line. This is the A prime profile of the blue protocol. It is not specific, but highly sensitive. If we have the present sign somewhere in the thorax, that is the very point where an A prime profile is suddenly replaced by any other profile, that's all, we have the lung point, and the lung point indicates the pneumothorax. This sign is specific. So now we are a bit late. So thanks to Zoom, which is a fantastic tool, I do not see uh, downstairs, but I think that I, uh, this is a paper that we wrote uh, together with Manu. But I, I, I imagine, because I know my slide by heart, but uh, I thank Zoom, they are great uh, software uh, makers. Well, uh, each time we use our stethoscope and want to confirm findings, each time we ask for a chest radiograph, each time we think that this critically ill intubated patient should go to the CAT, CAT scan room, and this can occur in uh, more than 15 disciplines, so lung ultrasound can be of use to many, many specialties, we will be interested in lung ultrasound. So please consider that I do not see the bottom of the screen. Thank you, Zoom. Thank you. Uh, the blue protocol is a fast protocol that is three minutes or sometimes five seconds done in the acute respiratory failure. It considers the lung because that's the suffering organ, no comment. It considers the veins, which are included. It considers the heart, just to say that the heart can be deeply simplified. This is a holistic approach. And the heart is just not in the decision tree of the blue protocol. These are only lung and venous items. These are the diagnosis where we will make our blue protocol. And this is a short lecture we will not explain. There is a 400 page textbook. We give two examples of holistic use in an acute respiratory failure. Here, we see the B profile, that is lung rockets with lung sliding at the anterior chest wall. The B profile is just 97% sensitive, 95% specific to hemodynamic pulmonary edema. Here, we have another of the eight profiles of the blue protocol. I see a lung consolidation. It is small, never mind. This is called the C profile. The C profile is not frequent, 21% of cases, but when you see it, it is 98% specific to pneumonia ARDS, the C profile. And these two examples have illustrated what is holistic ultrasound, that is, when using a simple machine, a single suitable probe with lung ultrasound, we will be able to simplify echocardiography. So we need to have a simple machine and enable us, enabling us to see the lung first at all. This is a diseased lung. The heart, second. And the venous system, and I don't see what is written, but I guess this is the third item. But if you want to make it the second item, you will make the blue protocol, because this is the position of the lung and veins using a simple equipment and one single universal probe. The false protocol now is another use of lung ultrasound. And 
very basically, it is devoted to acute circulatory failure. After ruling out obstructive and cardiogenic shock using a holistic approach, that is the pericardium, the right ventricle volume, and only this, the A prime profile for the pneumothorax or the B profile for pulmonary edema of a cardiogenic shock, fluid is theoretically given to patients who have the A profile because the PAOP, pulmonary artery occlusion pressure, should be not elevated. And when A lines get to B lines, this is the sign that the patient gets the value of 18 millimeters of mercury. This is the false profile. Just imagine what we can do with the false protocol. A few words on the SISAMI protocol. And I guess that there is the image of the article that we published again with Manual Brain, showing that the SISAMI protocol is a very fast protocol where each second matters to diagnose the reversible, non chockable causes of a cardiac arrest. And just in a few seconds, I can tell you that lung comes in first position and the heart will come in the fifth position. Time is lacking. Uh, time is lacking for speaking, for instance, of the lung ultratown score. That is LUS written in the stone forever. And for that, you should read the paragraph 23 of the wiki side of lung ultrasound. This is how I called this commentary written in chest last year, current misconceptions in lung ultrasound. And this is a guide for experts and also uh, beginners showing why we do not use the lung ultrasound score. But we use lung ultrasound when we assess uh, IRDS. Pitfalls, do they exist in lung ultrasound? Uh, so I cannot see, read what is written, but I guess that it is written that there are no real pitfalls. There are pseudo pitfalls and pseudo limitations. And if you have a correct teaching, you will diffuse all of them. There is a standardized answer for each of things that bother my colleagues. For instance, uh, they say false positives of a pneumothorax. This does not exist in the world of SURF my training center, and the blue protocol and critical ultrasound. Here, I guess, is a thorax of a very bariatric patient. Anyway, in spite of the fat obstacle, I can see clearly no beeline that is no pulmonary edema and the seashore sign that is no pneumothorax. Just imagine. Here, we can see the zone two and four of the International Consensus Conference on Lung Ultrasound. And just this is for me a pitfall because if you put the probe on zone two or four, you will see this. You will think that you are at the lung and you will see a huge lung consolidation. I let it to your inspiration. Instead, we use the blue points which allow to make a more simple medicine because this is where is the lung and not the liver as it was in the last image. Beware of the bugs, just to tell you, not for the patient, but for the next patient, that we don't use those machines that for us, especially in the pandemic era, are not devoted to make a clean discipline. At SURF, we propose compact machines, flat keyboards, and once again, the single micro convex probe. Just because this probe is universal because it has the perfect ergonomics, the perfect range and resolution for making this old transfrontenelar approach that gives you this definition. And this is the image that we have from critical ultrasound since uh, more than three decades. I think time is running. I will keep on the short but uh, challenging timing. If you have any questions, comments, or even more, you have the address of the surf. And I thank you so much for your kind attention.